I am thrilled to have here on the Rich Eisen Show one of my favorite players growing up because I knew when he came into the game, the lead was safe. Goose Gossage, Baseball Hall of Famer, Rich Goose Gossage here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Goose? Oh, thanks, Rich. Uh, one thing about it, it was going to be over quick. Oh, yeah. What, nine pitches <laughs> one sometimes, One way or right? the other, yeah. Do you, know, do you know how many nine pitch saves you've had in your career? Nine pitch saves? Yeah. Did you ever have any of those? You pitch? know, a writer told me how many seven out saves that I had. How many is that? I had 52 or 53. Oh, my. Yeah, I had 50 out of my 310. It was an interesting statistic that he told me, and it's all, it kind of backed up what I was saying. I'm not much of a statistic guy, but, um, you know, he backed it, it backed up kind of what I was saying. Please don't compare me with the current closers. And closer wasn't even a coin phrase back, uh, you know, when we were pitching, we were relief pitchers. So you weren't known as a closer then, and you would come on in the seventh inning. So what do you think of the relievers today then? Goose? Well, I think they're babied too much. I, I've always said I'd like to know how many of Mo uh, Rivera's uh, saves uh, are of uh, one inning and a three-run lead. Uh, really, that shouldn't even be a save. Uh, I got a few of those in my career, but not many. And what my point about is not a knock against Mariano. It's a it's a point that. I think he could be much more valuable to the team bring, bringing him in, uh, you know, say in the eighth more often. Than the, you know, they, man, it was like headlines when they came in in the eighth. So um, you, know, you see the special edition of the game, total evolution of it, Rich, from back in the 1962 when I broke into the big leagues where it was a, the bullpen was a junk pile where old starters went. They couldn't start anymore. So, you know, I've and then I, right as I was coming up, Raleigh was fingers was having some great success out there with those great Oakland teams, and uh, kind of put us on the map. Sparky Lyle was around. There'd been yeah. some good ones, Lindy McDaniel, and guys like that. But uh, you didn't want to be in the bullpen back then. And then Tanner and Sane put myself and Terry Forster, a left-hander. Uh, with the White Sox in the bullpen, and I became to love it. Yeah, it didn't. Weren't you the one who helped make uh, Sparky Lyle go from Cy Young to Cy Yonara? Wasn't that his phrase? Well, it, it was me. I was all me, and and it didn't it didn't work out the way I had anticipated. I thought that uh, you know I went over to the Yankees. Uh, how do you take a Cy Young award winner's job? Oh my God, I had come over thinking that, you know, obviously George was interested in me and we were negotiating. And then when the fin finally the deal went down and I signed with the Yankees, uh, I had envisioned us being the best left-handed, right-handed combination ever. And it it didn't work out like that. It I, They gave me his job on a silver platter. And boy, Rich, if you remember back in the 78, mm -hmm. uh, we ended up catching the Red Sox in 14 games out. After we were 14 games out, well, that was my horrendous start. That 14 game deficit with, with as badly as I pitched early on in the season. So where were you for Bucky Dent's home run? Obviously in the pen, but what, do you remember that that moment? Well, I was. Uh, at, yeah, sure. I mean, we were in the bullpen. You could see that we had a great, uh, uh, you know, an angle on it from trajectory, and it it was going to. We knew it was going to end up in the net. So. Um, you know, from where we were sitting out there in, in right field. So uh, then I ended up pitching the last two and two-thirds of that game, and and we went on to, uh, uh, you know, uh, win that one game playoff, and then uh, five to four we beat the Red Sox, went to Kansas City and, and beat the Royals, and then we went to the World Series with the Dodgers and beat them. So yeah, uh, it ended up being a great season, but that was not by design to take Sparky's job. Rich Goose Gossage joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. Anyone, anyone ever bat flip on you, Goose? No. And, you know, I never got shown up. And, and uh, you know, that was a, that was taboo. I mean, that was back in the day when you respected the game. You were, respected your opponent. It goes back to something that's been lost, I think, is sportsmanship and what we teach our kids, you know. And baseball's always been a great example of that and i just didn't want to see i didn't i didn't really i didn't mean to uh single out batista i think batista is a great player and 
you know, but you start doing this thing, they're going to be trying to outflip each other, you know, and where's it going to stop? And do we really want a bunch of Cam Newtons running around and, and acting like Cam Newton acted after the uh, Super Bowl is over? I don't think so. Did you see this young man in the University of Miami who's been uh, uh, carrying the bat halfway up the first baseline after hitting game-winning and game-breaking home runs? Have you, have you seen have well, you, seen this, you know this? what? We used to police it ourselves, and there's no police out there. You know, managers and coaches let these guys get away with everything. You know, they, you know, they're not going to tell these superstars not to do something. And and uh, you know, they're. It used to be the coach's job that if I acted the way these guys acted, I got on job at Chamberlain a few years ago about the antics that he was pulling out on the mat. First. Inside the other, the opposition, the grass. Hold on a second. You're going to get him on the phone line here. Uh, Goose Gossage is the call to the, the call from the bullpen right now is is a little off. Uh oh. It, yeah. We'll take a quick 60 second break. We'll come back. We'll get some more with Rich Gossage. A couple more minutes, and then Garland's going to be calling into the show. We're back in a minute. Time. Welcome back to the Rich Eisen Show. If you're on hold, please stay on hold. We now have a call to the bullpen that's on a landline. Uh, you there, Goose? You there, Goose? Yeah, sorry, uh, Rich. So much better. So you were talking about Jabba Chamberlain. You got on him recent, yeah, in recent days. Yeah, you know, he was doing his antics, and, and I was on the Oakland squad, uh, the team, when, um, you know, Dennis Eckersley, he didn't pitch the eighth very seldom and, you know, did the pumping of the fists and all that stuff and Eck's a dear friend of mine. I love Eck and, and we're good friends and but that was the one thing that really bugged me about Eckersley was was his antics on the mound. And this one particular time and this is what I was telling Jabba, I was on the D L and I'm sitting over in the dugout watching this uh this game and I said, Hey Eck, listen, whatever you do, he came in in the eighth inning, it was a playoff game and Robbie Alomar ends up hitting uh uh a game-winning hit off of him in the in the ninth inning, but in the eighth he started. He, he got the third out, pumped his fist, and I'm thinking, oh, Eck, don't do this. And I was watching him, and I'm thinking, please don't don't do it yet, Eck. Don't don't pump your fist. And he pumped his fist after that third out in the eighth inning, mm. and I was watching him, and I could had a good view of their dugout. I think every guy on that bench hit his head on the ceiling, jumping up, and. The bad thing, he went out in the ninth inning and ended up losing that ball game. And I'm not saying, but it's respect. And and I was taught by Jim Cott and great players like that, Wilbur Wood, Dick Allen, um, Chuck Tanner. Uh, you know, there's no place in the game for it, I don't believe. And, and let's just because everybody else is doing it, why do we have to in baseball? We act as a professional, respect the opposition, respect you know, uh, don't don't wake anybody up. Uh, you know, so it all goes back to sportsmanship, and you're going to see kids if we continue to flip bats. And you know what, Rich? I'm done talking about it. This is it. And I don't want to beat a dead horse. And I just, that's how I feel about the game. I'm very strong about it. They said, Goose, the game has passed you by. I said, no, the game hasn't passed me by, Rich. The has. Mm. Well, let me ask you this, Goose. When it comes down to it, though, we are in an era where hard play um, is now met with fisticuffs more often and and that there are some people who do believe that throw, flipping a bat, Cadillac and around a base, et cetera, et cetera, is showmanship and that, that we, have, we have reached that point in time and that you are part of a spot. We had Johnny Bench here when he talked about throwing chin music at somebody. He got some grief for it. Here in the 21st century. I mean, we have reached that point, Goose. Hey, let me tell you, it, it's going to go the way it is, Rich. And uh, I'm just glad I played it when I played it. You can't take a second baseman out. You can't take a shortstop out. You can't crash into the uh, uh, catcher anymore. Uh, the next thing that they're probably going to throw out there is an L screen for the pitcher. Have a couple pitchers get clocked good, and they will have a screen up. How many, how many outs can you give me right now, Goose? Oh, I'm done. Oh, come on. How many Take out? A, could you, can you get me? Take a get, fork in me. No, I, I just had an ankle fixed, and no. So you, <laughs> hey, Rich, yeah. let me tell you. Uh, somebody said, when did you get out of the game? Because I said, I didn't. I played as long as I could and as hard as I could, 
And I told him, I said, uh, you don't leave baseball. Baseball leaves you. You got no choice. At some point, at some point in your career in baseball, whether it's Little League from on up, uh, the game has a way of just leaving leaving you behind. And, and, you know, the higher up the ladder you go, the more competition and the better you have to be. And, and uh, you know, so that's the way the game is. And I, I hate to see the game the way it's going. You know what, Rich? I'll mm-hmm. tell you what's changed the game. Money. Sure. And, and I think if you're an owner and you get in the sweepstakes of owning a baseball team, you can't change the game. You have to take some of those inherent risks that are that are that are part of baseball and we, nothing you know nothing ever we policed it ourselves uh in the game sure we had fights and we had Ben team things that's just part of the game Do you, you know you can't have a manager come out and argue anymore bring people out of their seats the opposing uh fans and and an opposing manager comes out on the field and goes crazy the character of the game is leaving uh, rich and you know uh, and they're letting money control the whole thing I said you know those inherent risks if you're an owner please don't change the game you know inside part of the plate we policed it ourselves balls got away I hit three people in, in 22 career in, in 22 years mm-hmm. and and I hit three guys intentionally and I hit a lot of guys, but I was pitching in or half, and balls get away. And I pitched up in the zone to try and strike a guy out. And when that ball gets away, it's a head ball. Now, these kids that are throwing behind Syngard, Syngard, you know, throws a ball three feet behind. Why are you, why are you so obvious? I, I hit everybody where I wanted to hit them when I wanted to hit them. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, this throwing behind the back, it's so obvious. Just drill him and get it over with. <laughs> you are the best, Goose, man. You know. I-, I loved watching you play. I rooted so hard for you. You made uh, you made my life with the way that you played baseball, and I just am so honored that you call into the show, man. I really do, and I hope it's not. I know you said you're done talking about it. I hope it's not the last time we get to speak, okay? Oh, no, no, no. I, I, you know, I, I love the game, and I, I can't believe I did what I did in the game, and mm-hmm. I'm glad I did it at a time that I was taught. You know what, Rich? The biggest thing is no one's passing the torch of teaching people how to act. You know, it's it, you know, Reggie was probably the first guy that was the self-promoting guy, mm-hmm. and you know, and now everybody's doing it. It's dig me, you know. The bottom line is act like a professional. Don't act like a college punk or, a, you know, uh, or a kid that's in college. And even at the college level, have a respect for your, for your opponents. It ain't all about you and the way, you know, dig me and the camera's on me. So, you know, I'd just like to see it get back to some semblance of, of, of respect of the opposition and some, some sort of sportsmanship that, that, that I was taught. I got one minute left for you, Goose. Uh, sportsmanship's a conversation. What's going on in the NBA Finals right now? I don't know if you're paying too much attention to it, but yeah, Dray- I am. But so Draymond Green, as you know, is one technical maybe from being ejected, if not from this game, and maybe being from Game Seven. If you're the Cavs and you try and bait him, would that be good uh, gamesmanship or bad sportsmanship in your mind? Oh hell yes! I'd be baiting him. I'd be throwing everything I could out there at him. And and that's the discipline that it takes to be a, a great player. You can't go. You can't go there. You just can't go there. Mm-hmm. And no matter what, and you've got to keep telling you it's a it's a discipline thing. And uh, you know I'm enjoying it. And absolutely, that's part of the gamesmanship. And uh, okay, you know when hey when Sachs had the yips from throwing to first base, it's from second. Yeah. We said, hey, this is during the World Series. They, somebody comes up, he says, uh, hey, when Sachs gets the ball, let's throw, let's all dive on the floor of the dugout. <laughs> and and that wasn't politically correct. No. And Lasorda was so pissed off. As soon as Sachs got, I think he threw it 20 rows up above <laughs> our dugout. So, yeah, you know, right. Hey, you know. That works. Uh, oh, don't man. Let him, don't let him know it bothers you, Rich. Okay, Goose. Thanks for calling yeah. in. Well, I look forward to the next time already.
All right, buddy. You got it. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.